Hi, I'm Kevin Chisnell with VDOT. This is Chapter 4, Equipment and Construction Techniques. Upon completion of this chapter, you should be able to know about the various pieces of equipment used and the proper operation of the equipment and how the calibration of the equipment is performed. And also, you should understand the procedures in place or to place various surface treatments, whether they're seal treatments, modified single, modified double, uh, proper rolling techniques, and helpful suggestions for surface treatment paving. So first we'll talk about the equipment. Uh, there are several specialized pieces of equipment for a surface treatment job. And the first one we'll talk about is the emulsion distributor. It's the same distributor used for tack coat, if you're familiar with that, on asphalt hot mix paving. Uh, its function on a surface treatment job is to uniformly apply a liquid layer of asphalt at the specified temperature and at the specified range. The distributor includes a uh, truck-mounted tank and a spray bar with a full circulating system. The, uh, it has a heating system which uh, must be able to maintain the emulsion for surface treatment at the specified temperature. The capacity of the tank is, ranges between about 1,000 and 4,000 gallons. The distributor is equipped with a valve system that controls the emulsion and it's a, as I said earlier, a full circulation spray system that the emulsion that doesn't go onto the roadway actually goes back into the tank. The spray bar is normally 8 to 14 feet wide but can be adjusted to whatever width is needed for the treatment. There is a meter or a measuring device in the cab of the distributor and uh, this shows a screenshot of the, uh, of the control panel for the emulsion distributor. Spray bar height and the setting of the spray bar is very important. We'll talk about the nozzle angle setting in a little bit, but uh, the height of the spray bar um, is, is very important and needs to be calibrated, which we'll cover momentarily. Also on the distributor is a hand wand, which is used to spray emulsion into areas that are inaccessible by the distributor. The next piece of equipment we'll talk about is the aggregate spreader, and its job is to uniformly apply a layer of stone at the specified rate. These spreaders are self-propelled, and they have a receiving hopper at the rear of the spreader, which allows the aggregate to come in, and then there's a belt system that takes it into the spreading hopper. There are a series of gates on this spreading hopper that can be closed or opened to allow for the width of the aggregate, the spread of aggregate to be adjusted. The dump truck is used to bring the aggregate to the job site. Um, it actually locks into the spreader box um, on this hitch here, and the spreader pulls the truck alongside. Sometimes the, the operator of the truck may be required to put the truck in reverse and help the spreader up slight grades but normally it's just pulled. There are fins on either side of the, of the tailgate to uh, allow the aggregate to not go over the sides and onto the roadway while treating is happening. Rollers. There are two types of rollers that are normally used on a surface treatment job. And the first type is a pneumatic type roller. And the pneumatic tire roller um, has rubber tires with air. And this type of roller can embed the aggregate into the emulsion and if there are slight low spots it will embed those aggregates into those low spots. It does a really good job of embedding the aggregate and because it's a, a softer material it will not crush the aggregates. The steel wheel roller, as you see here, is operated in the static mode, uh, no vibration, no vibratory rolling. and. Um, it can really embed those aggregates into the emulsion. However, if there are slight depressions, it will bridge those depressions. So normally, we have this rubber tire roller go first, followed by the last pass of the steel wheel roller. As it says here, the final passes of the rolling process will be performed by the steel wheel roller. Um, it makes a nice smooth mat when it's completed. The bond of the aggregate uh, is very important to the service life of the surface treatment. There are combination rollers on the market 
Uh, as you see here, it has a steel wheel on the back and rubber tires on the front. Uh, it, it, it's the best of both worlds. It does a nice job. They're very specific and, and not, uh, not used a lot by contractors because these other types of rollers can be used in other applications. The mechanical broom, as we talked about in chapter three, uh, is used to sweep the road free of any dirt, dust, or debris, so the emulsion adheres to the roadway. Um, also, after the surface treatment is placed, if there is excess aggregate on the roadway, a broom can be required to go out and sweep this material off of the road. It's important to do this job early in the morning, um, some days after the treatment, but um, as the treatment warms up the, and, and very light pressure is used on the broom, if it gets too warm, it can actually dislodge the material. A vacuum truck uh, is used to clean the roadway before the treatment and can also be used in sweeping up any excess aggregate after the treatment. Again, light pressure if you have a broom. So calibrating this equipment is, uh, is very important. The contractor generally calibrates the equipment back at the shop prior to the season. And, uh, that documentation is generally carried in the vehicle with, with, the, um, with the vehicles that comes to the job site. But let's talk a little bit about calibrating and, and pre-checks prior to treatments. The uh, distributor is, is calibrated as well as the aggregate spreaders can be calibrated um, prior to placement of the treatment. Um, Checking the, the nozzles and their angle setting um, and the spray bar height is, is very important prior to treatment. The nozzle angle setting um, in relation to the spray bar axis should be about 15 to 30 degrees, whatever is recommended for that uh, distributor. Whatever that angle is, it should be uniform across the bar. And um, that's, that's very important, that that angle setting be proper and uniform. Now the spray bar height can have an effect on the uniformity of the emulsion spray. If the spray bar height's too low, there's positive separation in between the fans. If the spray bar height's too high, there's overlap of that material and it, uh, it will cause some streaking. Now the way we calibrate this is using the center section of the spray bar, we turn off the outside nozzles, leave one on, turn two off. This is for distributors that have a four inch nozzle spacing. So we leave one on, turn two off, leave one on, turn two off. We run a very short pattern back at the VDOT yard or somewhere off of the roadway and and then look at the pattern of that spray. Again, if there are spaces in between those sprays, then it's too low. If, if there's overlap, then it's too high. If they touch, but don't overlap, and we turn everything back on, we have what's called perfect triple coverage, where this nozzle, this nozzle, and this nozzle cover this area right here. Now, VDOT requires that an outside nozzle be, and a a specific end nozzle and what that end nozzle does is it cuts down this angle and, and the spray that was going out this way will actually um, be brought into this area here. Some contractors back in the old days used to turn this end nozzle instead of 15 to 30 degrees they'd turn it 60 to 90 degrees and what that did was put a fat spot out here but it starved this area for, uh, for emulsion and over time what happened was it didn't get treated properly and, and it, would, uh, it would break off. So end nozzles are required. And again, this is perfect triple coverage. This one, this one, and this one cover this area, and so on. Now calibrating the spreader uh, is, is done prior to the treatment. And, and what you do is take a one square yard piece of burlap, place it on the ground in front of the spreader, allow the spreader to go over it, Carefully pick it up and you can put it in a teared bucket, a bucket of known weight, and you'll know how many pounds per square yard you have. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. 
Then on the job site, both the asphalt emulsion and the, uh, the aggregate can be checked, calibration checks. And this is done by taking, for each course of, of treatment, taking teared pans and teared plates, weigh them together, it's very important you write the weight down, and of each, and then uh, you put those plates onto the roadway and you allow the distributor to go over the plates and you put the, the plate that has been sprayed with emulsion into the pan that, that it corresponds with. Then you allow the aggregate spreader to go over the other plate <clears throat> and you pick up both plates and place them in their corresponding pans and weigh them. In your class you will go through one of these um, surface treatment application worksheets and you will actually calculate these plates and pans um, application rates and come up with the application rate for asphalt and the application rate for aggregate. So moving from equipment calibration and now moving into actually um, the placement of the treatment the first thing we need to concern ourselves with is safety. The safety of the employees, the inspectors, the traveling public. Um, this can be done using the uh, Virginia Work Area Protection Manual uh, for traffic control and the contractor in the contract is responsible for the placement of signs, the use of flaggers, and if required, the use of pilot trucks. Traffic control measures <clears throat> used in the field will not guarantee safety, but it will help provide safety and a, a, a message to the traveling public that there's construction ahead. It's very, very important that these signs be put up and maintained throughout the construction and application of surface treatment. During construction of the treatment, the delivery equipment and the pilot truck are not to exceed 15 miles per hour in the work zone. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, for safety. Two, if the delivery equipment and the pilot truck are on the freshly placed lane, if you're placing two lanes of surface treatment, and you're placing the second lane, the faster they go, the more damage they do to this treatment. So it's very important that these pieces of equipment for safety purposes and for the integrity of the treatment, um, this 15 miles per hour be enforced. Weather. There are weather limitations in the contract for surface treatment. Um, if rain is imminent, don't, don't, don't start the work because what happens is the treatment will not adhere to the roadway and uh, if it gets wet shortly after it's placed and uh, the contractor will have to go back and place that treatment at their own cost. But weather limitations will be strictly followed by the contract. So construction of a single seal is very simple. The distributor sp sprays the emulsion onto the roadway at the specified temperature and the specified rate. That's followed by the spread of aggregate from the aggregate spreader and then back down here, you can't see them, but then that's rolled. The spread of asphalt material may not be more than six inches wider than the width covered by the cover material. In other words, we don't want more than six inches of exposed asphalt on the roadway. When placing surface treatments, the contractor strategically places tanker trucks of emulsion throughout the area or county that they're going to work in. The distributor holds between 1,000 and 4,000 gallons of emulsion. So it's a finite amount and they will run out. When that distributor runs out, the aggregate spreader should stop prior to the end of the spray of emulsion. When the distributor comes back, that spray will start on that joint. If we put two layers of aggregate and spread on top of that, that can cause a bump and we don't want that. 
So the, uh, the aggregate spreader needs to stop short and the emulsion tank or, or distributor needs to come up to the, uh, to the joint and um, start there. So a modified single seal is very similar to the uh, process for a seal treatment. However, instead of 3 tenths of a gallon per square yard, the first application is 17 hundredths of a gallon per square yard. And then the um, first course is rolled. A layer of emulsion at 15 hundredths of a gallon per square yard is placed. And a fine aggregate is placed on top of that, and it's rolled. Modified double seal is very similar to a single seal, except that there are two layers of emulsion and coarse aggregate. So you have the, the existing pavement, 17 hundredths of a gallon is placed, 15 to 20 pounds per square yard of aggregate is placed on top of that, then another 17 hundredths of a gallon of asphalt emulsion, and 15 to 20 pounds of, of coarse aggregate is placed on that. Then you have 15 hundredths of a gallon per square yard placed on those two courses, followed by the fine aggregate placed on top of that. And each layer is rolled. So talking about rolling, the proper construction pra practices of rolling, the rolling embeds the aggregate into the emulsion. Um, there are studies that show what happens when you don't roll or an area doesn't get rolled. Um, the aggregate isn't put into the emulsion. You don't have that film uh, collapse around the aggregate and uh, it, it will not adhere. So rolling is very important. Rolling shall be immediately behind the spread of cover aggregate. And um, the preferred practice is that this rubber tire roller go first followed by the steel wheel roller. A total of three coverages are required for a surface treatment for each course. First, the pneumatic roller. Then you can use a combination of both rollers, but the last roller for the full width should be the steel wheel roller. Longitudinal joints. We talked earlier that uh, the spread of aggregate shall not be more than six inches narrower than the spread of emulsion. And um, what we like to do for the center line so we don't get ridging at the longitudinal joint is to allow the aggregate spreader to go up near the edge, turn the outside gate off or um, have the spreader a little bit to the right of the center line. Um, and then when the second, when the pass is made in the other direction, the emulsion distributor goes right up to this line and the aggregate spreader goes right up to this line. That's a double application of emulsion, but it, but it normally doesn't bleed because it's in the center and you don't have a lot of, of, of tra traffic on top of it. And it's better than overlapping successive aggregates, especially on modified single, modified double, um, and making a ridge at the center line, which can become dangerous. Sometimes excess aggregate is, is placed on the treatment and if it, if it is, it becomes bad for the treatment because these, these free rocks on top can reorient the treatment below and it, it causes aggregates to break free from the surface. Also, these, these aggregates on the surface um, can become airborne and break windshields or, or chip paint on people's vehicles. So, Free aggregate, loose aggregate is, is not desirable. And normally, we wait a few days. This, I think this says three to seven days. Um, and then brooming or sweeping should be done in the morning to ensure that uh, the aggregate is not dislodged from the treatment. So, review and knowledge check. A pneumatic tire roller is the last roller used when embedding the aggregate into the emulsion, true or false? That's, that's false. We, we prefer that a steel wheel roller be used in the last pass. Number two, rollers must follow the stone spreader closely so that the compaction effort will take place prior to the emulsion breaking. Yes, rollers uh, 
rolling shall occur immediately after the spread of aggregate. Number three, the final passes of the rolling process will be formed by A, A, static steel wool roller, B, vibratory roller in the vibratory mode, C, pneumatic tire, or D, none of the above. The correct answer is A, <clears throat> a steel wheel roller. Number four, two factors that affect uniform applications of emulsions are A, nozzle angle, B, height of the spray bar, C, humidity, or D, both A and B. The correct answer is D, both A and B. Number five, in a single seal, modified single seal, the second pass is made in reverse rather than coming back to the starting point. You can run the second pass in reverse. Um, turn around and go back that way rather than going back and coming forward. Number six, in a modified double seal, two layers of 8P and two layers of nine, number nine, are applied. True or false? That answer is false. It's two layers of 8P and one layer of number nine. So that's chapter four. Next will be chapter five. Thank you.